Welcome to the Kupinger Call Analyst Chat. I'm your host. My name is Matthias Reinwart. I'm an analyst and advisor with Kupinger Call Analyst. My guest today is Marina Jantorno. She is a research analyst with Kupinger Call Analyst. Hi, Marina. Good to have you. Hi, Matthias. Nice to be here. It's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while, but it's not a full year, but we are actually trying to continue a conversation that we did almost yeah, a year ago, where we talked about the developments of the markets around identity and access management, then running up to EIC 2023. And there you had a great presentation about what's happening on the market and in the markets that are related to identity and access management. And guess what we are doing the same for eic 2024 today so we are looking at the recent developments regarding market developments um, market growth new topics um, new four letter acronyms and how they are uh, developing in the market so great to have you and let's jump right in so when you look as a research analyst that you are um, at the broader market of identity and access management, what happened in the meantime and what are the trends that are, you, you are currently seeing? Well, the identity access management uh, is, is experiencing a rise, but it is not just now. Uh, it is something that it's been happening for, for a while. Uh, we talked about this last year, as you mentioned uh, earlier. And... Um, Something that is a good indicator for that is the component annual growth rate. Um, this metric is an accurate way to actually determine what is happening in different segments in a certain period of time. Um, we can describe it as a kind of uh, mean or average, let's say, of the um, growth or well, uh, tendencies or a slowdown in the market. And what we can see in the different segments within identity access management is that uh, the component or growth rate is actually going on the rise in many of the markets. Um, for example, now in identity threat detection and response, for instance, that this is a pretty new market, we see that the component or growth rate exceeds uh, 20% yearly uh, in, in the period between 2022 and 2026. And we can see the same, for example, in access management. Um, this is a good indicator saying that this market uh, is well, presenting a uh, rise. Now, the main point is that organizations and uh, investing companies, they check on what is happening with those rates to actually, um, well, make investment, break into the market, expand it. And many businesses, what they are doing is, um, well, improving their security posture. There are many threats nowadays. Uh, and of course, with the rise of AI and all the sophistication and, and complexity of the cyber threats, uh, it is important to, to escalate, uh, well, the use of identity access management and as well as cybersecurity, I would say. Absolutely. And it's it's one thing to have the figures, to see the growth. The other thing is, and that is, that is where you as an analyst come in, is actually interpreting that. What, where does this growth come from? What are the trends behind that? And maybe you've mentioned access management solution, so solutions um, are on the rise. Um, you are working from home. I am sitting in my home studio. So we are obviously um, really demonstrating a trend. And it's 100% of us, you and me. So remote work is the new normality for uh, these days. Is this something that is reflected in access management as well? So this work from anywhere trend? Totally. Uh, because as you said, there are people who are working 100% remote, even from different countries. Um, and this is showing a, a, a trend in terms of companies wanting to uh, secure their assets, secure the access and giving the access to the uh, proper people. Now, this uh, robust growth that we see actually indicates that the companies are investing in scalable solutions because what is happening is, as you said, people are working from everywhere and even from different regions. So for example, let's say that your company is based in the US and maybe you have employees who are working in Europe or in the UK or in Latin America. And in that sense, 
uh, it is important to actually maintain strict security controls. Now, the trend is going towards different um, techniques, let's say. We can say, for example, uh, multi-factor authentication, passwordless, uh, single sign-on, and, uh, well, of course, adapting the policies no, to what is happening now, um, especially if we talk about the use of AI, uh, what is the data that can be shared and with whom. This is what is uh, driving the growth in this market. Right. And you've mentioned that also in your introduction when you said which markets you uh, are covering right now. I had an, an episode of this podcast just last week or a few weeks ago, I think it was last week, with our colleague Mike Neunschwander, and he introduced me to yet another four-letter acronym. It's ITDR, Identity Threat, and you know, I, I'm, I'm, you, you know the, the acronym much better than I do. <laughs> um, so um, detection and response, of course, it is. Um, so this is a new market, but it's really not. It's a new combination of technologies that are combined to each other to also reflect the trend that you just mentioned. Um, people are working from anywhere and this increases the attack surface. Uh, so um, dealing with this in this work from anywhere scenario demands for a new product market and a new set of technologies. Uh, can you discuss, when you look at the market figures, the increased importance of ITDR solutions in this cybersecurity market? Because it goes beyond IAM. Yes, of course. Um, as you mentioned, this is a new segment, or we can call it a new segment, because it's uh, directing the efforts to identify very fast, detect, and respond, you know, in, in a fast way. So then there are no alterations or minim minimum alterations in terms of um, operations, for example, or minimal impact. Now, the thing is, ITDR solutions are now, um, let's say, in the mode. Everyone is talking about this because the market is actually starting as such. The techniques or the, well, the technologies were actually already in use, but now this is uh, becoming a market itself. And what we can see is uh, that the component or growth rate is almost 30%. If we see it's like 28.6%, which shows that there is, uh, well, a constant raise uh, coming here with this market. Now, why this is important and why this is becoming uh, a market or a segment, and this is because in the digital environment that we have today with people working from everywhere, with companies uh, switching from, um, let's say, on-site to online, and even with digital, for example, retail opportunities or in the financial sector or in multiple industries, we can see that identity-related breaches are very common because the only thing that you need to be a target is being online. And uh, ITDR offers a proactive perspective on this. And it is not just about detecting the threats, as the name is actually indicating, but it is also including new techniques or new technologies, like, for example, advanced analytics. Uh, the importance of the data is, is actually um, something that we have to consider. I dare to say that eventually the synthetic data will overshadow uh, the real data that we have because it will be very risky to use the original data, for example, in open sources like in Python. And if you want to use new technologies, you need to actually use machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and all these technologies could actually help to identify anomalies and potential threats. And usually what is happening with the ITDR solutions is that companies can detect the threats before they cause any harm in the organizations. And this is why ITDR is uh, gaining importance in, in, the, in, in the market. Now, these trends that we can see here shows that there is a growing recognition from organizations to actually dedicate efforts to the threat detection, to respond to the threats, and to focus on identities that are fundamental to a robust cybersecurity strategy. Because as we said, there are uh, many things going on and it is important to protect the digital assets of the company. Right, and you've mentioned many of these modern and up-to-date uh, state-of-the-art technologies. You've mentioned machine learning. You've mentioned pre pro uh, 
preparing for all these new kinds of threats. Um, on the other hand, it's 2024, and I thought this might be something that we can skip for this year, but we cannot. We need to talk about email. We need to talk about email security. And we, of course, are talking about phishing, about ransomware, about attacks via email, because this technology, email, everything that's below there is implicitly insecure, so there needs to be um, work done. So critical uh, concern for business in email security. Um, is this still a growing market because of phishing, ransomware, and all of us regularly falling victims to these attacks that come in? Well, uh, there are many things going on in this sense. Uh, as you said, the ransomware and phishing were the nightmare of many organizations in, in the last years. Uh, we presented with uh, Christopher um, last in, in the last Cyber Evolution event, um, a survey that we uh, conducted and we compared what was happening uh, within the threats and what were the, um, the attacks that were treating in the most to organizations and ransomware was like at the very top. But now there are many uh, cybersecurity train, awareness training, um, people in different levels in the organization are actually learning on how to uh, be preventive, let's say. But still, uh, email security is a market that has um, certain, let's say, importance in this sense, especially because we, we need to understand that even though this is a mature market, still emails are a good target for attackers. And uh, there is a steady growth that we can see. For example, uh, the component growth rate of this market is 14.2%, uh, which is actually pretty good considering that this uh, market is in the mature level. Now, the attacks that you mentioned, the ransomware, the phishing, often compromise uh, the emails. And um, the problem here is if there is a breach not only the companies that are actually failing in comply with uh, GDPR regulations or, well, other um, data protection regulations, but also it could mean a reputational damage. Uh, we know already several organizations who face this kind of problems, and it was very hard for them to actually recover after that. So email security is actually very important to defend the organizations from the sophisticated email attacks. Um, and by doing so, by actually responding and filtering and doing like a threat intelligence, let's say, companies can actually prevent. Um, what is happening now with the use of AI, for example, is that there is a better identification on the emails that are coming from uh, dangerous addresses. And we can even see in the um, open, uh, open source emails, for example, a Gmail, you can see an, in a spam, some emails that are coming from addresses that are targeting people to actually, um, well, attack the, the user. So imagine what is happening in organizations. So having a proper uh, email security solution could be, could be saving, let's say, uh, the reputation and a lot of loss for um, organizations. So I believe that this market is still relevant and, and it will keep growing. There is a steady growth here that we can see. Absolutely. Uh, I understand that growth and I understand the risks that go with that. Um, but nevertheless, I want to turn away from this dark side of IT to move over back to the shiny bright side of what IAM can provide. So when it comes to this growth across the IAM sector, and again, we are moving towards EIC 2024, quick hint, June 4th to June 7th in Berlin. Um, what are the keys, uh, some of the key strategies that businesses are adopting to ensure that they remain ahead of the curve when it comes to IAM? So to be faster than the competition, but also to leverage more interesting, more creative, more emerging technologies earlier than others. Well, it is important to understand that organizations are not focusing only in one solution. Uh, businesses are taking multifaceted approach, let's say. And organizations are investing in scalable solutions. So they try to offer a comprehensive coverage across different identity types, including consumers, employees, machines. Um, and this is why decentralized identity and CIM gain importance in the market. So there is a clear push 
towards integrating advanced technologies like artificial intelligence, as we mentioned before, to predict and prevent breaches. And the companies are focusing on creating a better experience as well for the users. So then it is something uh, easy for the users and it doesn't compromise the security, which is actually the main point in maintaining the productivity and the user satisfaction. Right. And, and, and you've mentioned that already before. These are also markets that are not really clearly delineated. So there are overlaps. There are technologies that are, and you can describe this much better than we can as Kupinger Call with the identity fabric, combining all these concepts into one overall overlapping picture. So how do you see these markets, for example, ITDR for more on the cybersecurity side of things for pro pro protecting identities and their access and consumer identity on the other hand, traditional IGA, um, and access management on the real-time um, access provisioning side of things. How do these things influence each other? And do you see that also reflected in the figures already? Uh, yes. Well, if we see, for example, ITDR that is uh, growing, the integration is driving a more holistic or a more comprehensive approach to the security. So then it encourages the, the, the converse between access management CIM and other solutions that will contribute to the threat detection. So the market data that we see, it's reflecting this trend. So it's reflecting that there is a growth here. And it indicates that each segment is actually growing on its own, but there is an overlap in the solutions required by the organizations. Now, the companies are not looking only at ITDR in isolation, because as I said before, they are doing a multiple approach. So then they are embedding these capabilities into their identity access management solution with the idea of an integrated security platform that cover all the aspects of identity protection. Right, when it comes to, to the drivers behind that, to make sure that we understand why people are doing this. And this is the question, I'm, I'm an advisor, I talk to end user companies, large ones, medium sized ones. Um, usually the question is, why should I do that? Why should I do um, IAM, why I should be better there? And the, the most common answer is because I have to, because I have to be compliant. I need to follow this next, 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 the next big regulation, be it DORA in financial industries, be it, be it NIST 2 for many, many others that could not consider themselves to be critical before or critical infrastructure, but they are now under that umbrella. So many are doing that for regulatory compliance purposes. Um, how much does that really influence these figures or are people also thinking about business enablement, new technologies being better, faster in, in, in providing the right solutions? Is it really just compliance? Is it just the law? Is it just because they have to? Well, uh, it is appropriate to say they have to or they must. Um, regulatory compliance now, it's part of the digital environment. Uh, we like it or not, it is there. and. Uh, the idea is that there should be some limitations and some rights to protect, uh, well, the users and organizations data. So governments are implementing stricter data protection regulations in, in, you know, in the world, actually. Um, Europe started with the GDPR, but then we have the CCPA, for example, in California, and there are other regulations as well around the world. Now, this is actually pushing the market towards more advanced solutions. And the idea would be, to have solutions that are capable of providing detail access log, robust access control, uh, comprehensive audit trails. Compliance is not just um, about legality, as you said, okay, they have to, but it, it is also something important for the customer trust because um, organizations or customers that actually see that the companies have certain certification or they comply with the regulations would actually trust better in these vendors. And there are several certifications nowadays that can um, prove that the organizations are complying with the regulations. And I believe that this is, um, let's say, a stamp of quality as well. 
Exactly. And I, I did a presentation on, on zero trust and the impact of strong, reliable identities on the availability and the quality of zero trust earlier this year in, in Vienna. And the question then was raised, are we doing all this IAM stuff for zero trust? So it was just the other way around. So I said, no, it's, um, it's, it's also really beneficial. Everything that you do for zero trust in the, in terms of identity and access management, making that stronger and incre increasing the trust in authentication and authorization that also helps you in being compliant applying to the regulations. So that was the other way around. Uh, and I think that that's the, the, the bigger story, the better story to, set, to tell um, everything that you do for your compliance will also help you in, as you said, demonstrating um, um, strong cybersecurity, demonstrating compliance, demonstrating adherence to, to privacy regulations and protecting customer data, for example. So this is all part of, of a bigger picture that needs to be understood. It's not only regulation, but they are a good driver when it comes to vendors selling uh, products. Absolutely. It's a kind of retrofitting, you know, if you, if you think about that, as you mentioned. So it is good for your organization. It is good for the customer. And you also are complying with the regulations of the country or the regions where you are operating. So... In the end, it is necessary. Right. And I think we, and when we did this last year, I asked the same question that I will ask right now for the final questions. Having a research analyst, um, um, understanding the figures, looking at the markets, doing predictions in that podcast episode, of course, I need to ask you for your big crystal ball to look into it and to say what will happen in these segments that we just talked about, or maybe some that we did not talk about in the next five years as beyond the current forecast period. Do you dare? Well, uh, it is very challenging to predict the future. As you say, you know, it, it's like uh, looking at the at the crystal ball. But um, what we see is that these segments suggest that there will be an increasing emphasis on identity-centric security in the coming years. Now, uh, we might see a further fusion, for example, of artificial intelligence and machine learning with access management and with ITDR. And uh, AI is still growing. So now we are in the in the very beginning of this journey. And uh, the idea would be to integrate artificial intelligence uh, technologies to the existing technologies, and then we can predict the threats more accurately. I believe that this is what will happen. And the rise of quantum computing cloud also would introduce both new risk and solutions. So uh, the constant rule here is that as long as cybersecurity threats evolve, so then the solutions will always evolve. And uh, because there should be new solutions or uh, new technologies that fight against these new threats. Exactly. And if I think of what I will be doing at EIC, I will be doing a moderation for a whole day on decentralized identity and the standardization efforts that are going on in there. We will do a two hours introductory workshop on, guess what, decentralized identity. Um, so this is a topic on the rise. It is not yet well reflected within the figures, so it's an emerging market. But I expect that to be a really, really big market and maybe it shows up in the figures next year. Um, when we look at the topics at EIC, um, Marina, you will be there, I will be there. Um, what are topics that are you looking forward to? Are these the ones that you just mentioned? So ITDR, CIAM, or what else are you looking at when, when we meet in, in Berlin in June? Yes, well, these topics for sure will be there, but also I will be moderating a track um, that is update, uh, Upgrade Reality. And this upgrade reality will focus mostly on artificial intelligence and the impact of artificial intelligence in all these uh, technologies and in different sectors. So I'm super looking forward to it. And I really hope we can meet uh, some of our audience there. Absolutely. Looking really forward to that. So we will cover everything from boring email security to really shiny AI decentralized identities. So the full the full scope of topics will be there at EIC. We will have lots of experts. Will the biggest it will be the biggest EIC ever, of course. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. I'm really looking forward to the audience maybe being there. If you see us there, if you can catch us there and you've been watching this episode, reach out to Marina or to me just to make sure that you can raise your questions, but you don't have to wait for Berlin. You can leave your questions, your comments everywhere. Otherwise, just reach out to us by mail um, or via social media. We are 
at LinkedIn and almost everywhere anyway. So we are reachable. Um, Marina, <laughs> we, are, we are reachable and you can communicate us. You don't have to send mails. And if you send mails, we of course will check them for security and we will not click on phishing links. Mm -hmm. Um, but but reach out to us. We are happy to to answer your question and get in touch. And really looking forward to socializing just with the people at EIC and with our audience. If you are there, um, thanks, Marina, for being my guest today. We will do that in one year, I think, again. Um, but in the meantime, let's uh, start with doing EIC and doing Cyber Evolution later that year. And um, yeah, thank you for being my guest today, Marina. Thank you, Matthias. It was my pleasure. Have a great day.